Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you Nancy Drew commentary, clues, and cookies. This is going to be our first video in a blind playthrough for, yes, it's finally been released, Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem, the 33rd game in the Nancy Drew series. This has been a nearly five year wait. This is likely going to be a completely different experience than any Nancy Drew game yet made. I am super excited and extremely curious to see what this experience is going to be like. Already, things are looking very different. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently than I usually do because this is going to be a completely blind playthrough. I have not looked at the game yet. I have not clicked anything on the game, so this is going to be brand new. I apologize in advance for any putzing around or any difficulty with puzzles that I have. I will do a completed walkthrough where I have played the game before to solve the puzzles. I will post that, and I will also do a review of this game after this blind playthrough, but I thought it would be fun to get this out and show my first impressions of the game. One of my first impressions is that we have this um, real interesting bar on the bottom here and a lot of grass going on and some um, uh, fire in the background here. My graphics are on low. Audio volume, subtitles, tutorials, window mode. Interesting. What happens if I were to increase the graphics? Do I have an issue? I know some people have been having issues with the graphics. I might just leave them on low just so that I know that I won't have any problems. That's low. Medium. Oh my, that makes a big difference, but I don't know if I'm going to be if my computer will be able to run it. And then high graphics. Okay, let's give it a try. We'll try it on high. <laughs> Extras here. Achievements. View achievement progress. Okay. Okay, so there's a pretty long list of achievements here. Already my mouse is really delayed, which is interesting. Let's go back here. Um, what other extras do we have? credits and then a movie trailer. Watch the trailer for Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. Okay, um, that's interesting. I guess let's just go ahead and start a new game. Amateur Sleuth or Master Sleuth? Normally I do Master Sleuth, but let's do Amateur Sleuth since this is our first time with a completely new format. What will happen? I'm so excited and a little bit terrified, <laughs> but mostly excited. Dear Ned, Austria has been wonderful so far. Dad called. He wants me to get an old relic while I'm here. The Book of Apologies, which dates back to the 17th century witch trials in Salem. I'll be going to Mosam Castle to retrieve it before I head back to the States. It's said to be haunted, so I'm expecting some good scares and mysteries. Ever yours, Nancy. Feels like ages since I was on my last adventure. So, are you coming in? Uh, uh, that's all right, Miss Drew. I'd prefer to stay out here. Why? It's so warm and inviting in here. <laughs> um, yes, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. All of Judge Sewell's effects are there, just as your father requested. Although, I will tell you, as I told him, the desk is locked, and I don't have the key. But I will gladly stay and answer any questions you have. From other side of this door. I recommend opening the window for some light. There's no electricity here. Well, in that room at least. Click to move. Okay. Click on objects to interact with them. 
That's pretty normal. Oh, much better. What a wonderful view. It's not a bad view. Hold right mouse button to look around. Okay, so this is different because we can look up and around. Click on the screen's edges to turn. And it looks like it redirects you to a neutral height when you turn. Okay, interesting. Oh, and that turns me all the way around. Gotcha, okay, so I right click to look down. What do we have down here that I can interact with? Um, nada? Ooh, I you can said Judge this. Sewell was a pious man. Yes, he believed in the healing powers of the good book. Of course, the Bible was also used to justify executing people. Depends on who's reading it. It's often misinterpreted. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Sounds like a man full of regret. Okay. Psalm 55, 1. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Give ear to my prayer, O oh God. God, have mercy. Okay. Oh, interesting. So if I click on it, I can get an easier way to read it. Rotate. I can rotate the note and, like, look on the back. Is there anything on the back? <laughs> Written in lemon juice, perhaps? Um, okay. That's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. Um, whoa, whoa. You see, if I need to do anything quickly, these controls are not going to be super beneficial. Official. Um, there's a chain. It doesn't look like I can look at anything else over here. Whoa, whoa. I apologize for anyone watching this that's like, um, nauseous <laughs> from the movement. Uh, I know some people get bad motion sickness. Is this sickness. Judge Sewell's desk? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That desk is where he spent most of his time working when he wasn't in court. Custom made. If the Book of Apologies does exist, he would have written it at that desk. And what's inside this alleged book? Your father didn't tell you? <clears throat> it was a ledger containing all the names of the accused witches from the Salem Witch Trials. Judge Sewell had doubts about his convictions, and he wrote the book as a means to... make amends. Allegedly. Yes. Okay, the um, subtitles are extremely delayed. I don't know if that's because of the graphic setting that I'm on or if that's just how they are. Let's see here. So we can zoom in on this desk and look at the picture back here, it looks like. Interact hold to look so I can look at it from different angles oh I did something I moved the lantern and I guess I unlocked the desk let's look I at this first though it's addressed to Abigail Hathorn Woodley what does it say I do regret to write to you in this state I have been racked with guilt as my fervency of spirit was too great to determine a conviction just. He asks for her forgiveness and for God's. I don't like that it reads or that Nancy like interprets it before we can even read it. That's interesting to me. Dear Abigail Hawthorne Woodley, I do regret to write to you in this state. I have been racked with guilt as my fervency of spirit was too great to determine a conviction just. Relentlessly have I cried for his mercy, longing for his light to bathe my conscience clean. 
Over recent years, I have been sent punishments only attributable to godly wrath. Two of our daughters have perished, my wife's mother as well, and our latest child did not draw breath when born. I must repent, lest my children forever be held in anger and contempt by our father. To right the wrongs made in zealous blindness, I am writing a book I call the Book of Apologies. To be worthy of his mercy, I am traveling the world to note down all the names of those wrongfully accused of witchcraft. Let this be my final legacy, my only way to right the wrongs I have helped create. As guilt allows me not to ask for your forgiveness, though know that my son, know that my soul remains forever tortured by the knowledge of what I have done. With regret, Judge Samuel Seawall. And there is nothing written on the back. Okay. And again, we can read it like this. What does this mean? Good question. Okay, so it looks like we got locked. Oh, we didn't get it open. But I did something here, didn't I? I, like, triggered a... A lantern? This is interesting because it kind of adds a whole other level of difficulty in the fact that it's not entirely clear what you can and can't click on. Which is interesting. Okay, can I like look... Whoa. My, my controls are opposite, so if I try to go down first, it goes up. An old chest. But it won't open. But that's not really important right now. An old chest. But it won't open. But that's not really important right now. Say it's locked, Nancy. <laughs> you know you want to. Okay, I guess we can go that way, or we can go... Here? Malleus Maleficarum. Wow. The Hammer of Witches itself. Gives me chills knowing what it did. Yes, indeed. A how-to guide for hammering out witchcraft. It was written in 1487 by a man whose name I won't even bother to mention because he used bunk science to send hundreds, if not thousands, of people to their deaths. Oh! Malus Maleficarum, part three, second head, question four. The judge should act as follows in the continuation of the torture. First, he should bear in mind that just as the same medicine is not applicable to all the members, but there are various and distinct cells for each several member, so not all heretics or those accused of heresy are to be subjected to the same method of questioning, examination, and torture as to the charges laid against them. But various and different means are to be employed according to their various natures and persons. How a surgeon cuts off rotten limbs and mangy sheep are isolated from the healthy. But a prudent judge... Now a surgeon cuts off rotten limbs and mangy sheep are isolated from the healthy. But a prudent judge will not consider it safe to bind himself down to one invariable rule in his method of dealing with a prisoner who is endowed with a witch's power of taciturny, and whose silence he is unable to overcome. For if the sons of darkness were to become accustomed to one general rule, they would provide means of evading it as a well-known snare set for destruction. Interesting. Huh. Malefis Maleficarum. Dr. Hurst? Yes, yes, I'm here. What else can you tell me about the Book of Apologies? As I mentioned, it's the book written by Judge Samuel Sewell himself, detailing the names of people accused of witchcraft. Sewell was one of the very few judges who regretted his actions. The book became his way of finding redemption. Sewell himself was originally from England, but acted as a judge in the Salem Witch Trials. Do you perhaps know why Carson would need such a book? Just out of curiosity, of course, it's, it's just such a very unusual request. He's looking into it as a favor for the current judge in Salem. Oh. 
How long have you known my dad? Oh, Carson and I are not that close. He reached out to me because I'm the historian keeping track of all the relics here. And, as he guessed, we should have the Book of Apologies... somewhere. Lucky I was already here on vacation. I was quite surprised when he called and asked me to come. Though I have to admit, visiting a castle is something I've never been able to turn down. Do you... do these kinds of things a lot? From time to time. The doctor here is <laughs> really a mover and a shaker <laughs> out in the hallway. <laughs> Austria is wonderful. I do enjoy it here myself. I, I'm not from Austria. I was brought here by my work. The food is quite an experience. The pancake soup was great. Yes, the frittatensuppe. The locals consider it traditional. Frittatensuppe. <laughs> I'll get back to it. Take all the time you need. She's just swaying back and forth. We have a phone too. Oh, checklist. Search Sewell's desk. Find book of apologies. Okay. Can I call anyone? I can call Carson and I can call Ned. Why are their pictures so blurry? <laughs> and why is my phone so blurry? Messages. Take care, Nance. Okay, talk to you soon. Hey, Nance, how's it going? Hey, Ned, everything is great. Austria has some wonderful views and people are so nice. How are you? I'm good. Still on vacation. Gonna go hang with a few friends tonight. Miss you. Miss you too, Nance. We'll have to catch up more later. The bus is here. Okay, talk to you soon. Carson. Hello, Nancy. As I mentioned on the phone, my old acquaintance in Salem asked me for a favor, and since you're already in the area, it would be great if you could help. No worries. I love me a good castle. Still, I apologize for interrupting your vacation. I understand. Don't mention it. It's fun, really. Great. Let me know when you've met Dr. Hurst. The book should hopefully be stored somewhere within Mooshum. Will do. Talk to you later. Take care, Nance. Mooshum. Pictures. Um, don't need to do that now. And then a camera. Interesting. Okay. How do I put this away? Like that. Okay. So, I guess let's continue to try and get into this desk. That's not the desk, Nancy. I said the desk. <laughs> Interact, hold to look. Can I look at, like, is there anything on the side of the desk? Ooh, there's this thing. It almost looks like there's an indent here. Um, is there one on the other side? Click right, right mouse button on an inventory item to inspect it. Oh, I found a key. Okay. So, a key to unlock the desk? Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Does it unlock the... Um... Click right mouse button on an inventory item to inspect it. Hold right mouse button to rotate. Click on the item to interact. Ah, okay, will it fit now that I've done that? Aha! What a clever desk. It even comes with a labyrinth. Okay, so I guess I hold and drag to move cube. Is it just a maze? That's a really simple maze. <laughs> okay. Bring this cube up here and plop. <laughs> Easy. I found it. It's here. What? Really? Amazing. It's locked behind some sort of cage, though. The lock says A-W. Any ideas? Root beer? A W? No. But I have some tools in the shop that might be able to cut it free. In my shop. I I'll go. Meet me there. Where is that? Hey, wait for me. Uh. The Book of Apologies. It's locked. <laughs> it's locked. Yeah, it is. 
Okay. Am I supposed to follow her? Hey, lady. Nancy! This way! Where is that? Dr. Hurst? Nancy Drew. It's Deirdre Shannon. Deirdre? Can I call you back? I'm in the middle of... Deirdre, I have to call you back. Wait, wait, don't hang up on me. Elizabeth? Elizabeth! Oh! Hey, what are you doing? Oh. <coughs> what? The book! They took the book! Uh, run! Get them! Where'd they go? <laughs> Where on earth am I going? Okay, I guess I'm leaving. Stop! Stop running! Get him, Nancy. Yeah, whoa, oh, oh, okay, jumping off the ledge. Okay. Get him. He went this way. He went down here. There's a bunch of mushrooms. Is he by the shrooms? Am I just supposed to keep following him? I'm gonna get you, whoever you are. Book thief. Aha! Hey, you. Saw him leave. Okay. Gotta figure out which way they went. Must be a clue here. First class to Boston. So Let's they went take it to Boston. To Boston? A and W key. Okay. Oh, this opens up the journal. Okay. W. Same as the desk. This canister looks to have been used as a homemade smoke bomb. A blue one. This canister looks to have been used as a homemade smoke bomb. Okay. Um I guess that's it. My phone was orange, so it looked like I had something to do. Oh. What do yes, you want? Deirdre, what is it? You know where I am right now? Salem. Salem? As in witch trial Salem? Obvi. Come on, Drew. My cousin has... Well, she's gotten into some trouble here. And I thought I could help her out. But it turns out this situation is much more complicated than I anticipated. So now, I'm calling you to ask for some... guidance. <laughs> you want my help? Ugh, yes. Don't make this more painful. I could use your... professional opinion, okay? Well, it so happens that the case I'm on is connected to Boston, which is just nearby Salem. And I was never a big believer in coincidences. Oh, are you sure? I'd love to. Seriously? I thought I had reached a dead end, but it looks like I have to go to Massachusetts anyway. 
In any case, a fresh perspective would do me good. Ugh, you're already annoying me, and you're not even here yet. <laughs> you're welcome? I think it might even be fun. Oh, this is so the worst idea I've ever had. I'll pick you up from the airport. Okay. So we're transitioning. I appreciate you coming here, Drew. I'm just glad you didn't change your mind and leave me at the airport. Might have crossed my mind. Keep the excessive cheeriness under control, and we'll be fine. Hmm. No promises. Where were you, by the way? Austria. Did I interrupt a vacation with Ned? Didn't you bring me here to help with a case? Yes, I did. And that's it. A fire? Was anyone hurt? Happened in the middle of the night. No one was there, thankfully. The house wasn't completely destroyed. The person who lived there had to move out. Just so we're clear, this is my case. I know you're a detective and everything, but this is personal. It's family. Well, extended, and from my father's side. But whatever, that's not the point. It's personal. You take my lead, okay? Of course. But? Well, I have done this a couple of times, Deirdre. And in my experience, we can cover twice as much ground if we work side by side. I, you know, respect your experience and whatever, but family trumps experience. It's sensitive, and I don't want you messing it up by being too... Too what? To you. You're a question machine. This requires gentle handling. Delicate. <laughs> and that's been your approach. Well, like I say, I need help. So, can I ask some questions? Like anyone could stop you. Why don't we start with your extended family? They're cousins. The Perrys. P-A-R-R-Y. Oh, like in fencing. Yes. Tegan is the older one. May is younger. They've... They had a difficult childhood, okay? And now May is suspected of committing arson on the most important historic mansion in Salem. And I know it's not true. I know it. What can you tell me about May? She has a reputation as a troublemaker. It seems like a loner to me. Maybe a bit odd at times. Sometimes she can even sense things before they happen. Odd how? I don't know. Troubled teen stuff. Difficult time as a kid. Oddest thing is, she won't give an alibi. That would be seen as suspicious. That's the problem. Everyone is so suspicious of her. Prejudice, I guess. Because of... Well, you'll see. Sounds like we should talk to her soon. Where do you think we're going? What does Tegan think about this? She's worried about May, obviously. Tegan isn't like May. She's... upstanding. She works at the Salem Museum and doesn't know a thing about criminal cases. Which is why she contacted me. One more question. What can you tell me about this historic mansion? It's called... the Hathorn House. And it's old. Like, really old. And now it's been set on fire. Nothing else significant about it? Well, yeah. A lot of things. But one that's... Ugh, that's kinda why you're here. Which is why? The Hathorn House 
is haunted. Seems like fires only happen when you're around, Deirdre. <laughs> Coincidence, I think not. Well, that was an interesting little drive with Deirdre. What do you mean, haunted? Exactly that. There's ghosts. Deirdre. I don't believe it either, Drew. But I can't explain it. Everyone seems to think they exist. With so many sightings, even if it isn't real ghosts, something is definitely going on. I thought that maybe you can disprove them. So would you please get out of my car and come inside? We go. If we're going to work side by side, you'd better learn to keep up with me. Oh, you must be Nancy. Thank you so much for coming. You know, you live in the same neighborhood for 20 years and you'd expect your neighbors to be a little more understanding when your family is falsely accused of a horrific crime. Oh, I'm sorry. How are you, Deirdre? I'm good, thanks. Tegan Perry, welcome to my home. Well, our home, although right now my parents are literally on safari in Namibia, so... While their daughter is being convicted of a crime she didn't commit, I'm taking care of things around here. They'll be home soon. Hopefully. A very expensive courier is tracking them down in the bush. Top notch, I found him on the internet. Deirdre tells me you'll be assisting her in clearing my sister's name. Assisting? Yeah. She's innocent. I don't know why she won't help herself. She's got... a difficult reputation. Well, you know, Deirdre, what people here can be like. She doesn't trust easily, not since... I'm sorry, are you hungry? There's clam chowder, homemade. A little taste of New England. I made up the guest bedroom for you, Nancy. Deirdre, sorry, you're bunking with me. Make yourselves at home. Oh, I almost forgot. After you girls get comfortable, you two should swing by the museum. Might as well take in some history while you're here, right? <laughs> Just don't get suckered into that witch's walking tour. Olivia Ravencroft is not a witch. She would have you believing all kinds of nonsense about the town being full of ghosts. I thought you two used to be friends. That was a long time ago. Look, I I'm sorry, I gotta get going. Running late to an appointment. Thanks, Tegan. I appreciate you letting us stay. Before you go, do you have time for a quick question? Nancy, we just got here. Sorry, I know you're in a rush. It would really help. Of course, I have time for one question, <laughs> if it'll help. What was Deirdre doing with her hands? <laughs> she was like casting a spell. I love it. Um. What can you tell me about where the fire happened? What have you heard about it? Look, I appreciate you want help, but I don't want you dragging all that up and upsetting May. You told me she would be able to reach her. That's not the... That's not what Nancy is asking about. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. I just thought since the Hathorn House is important to the town, you must know about it. Through the museum. Oh, I'm so sorry. The Hathorn House fire. Yes, John Hathorn was one of Salem's founders. His large house estate was the oldest surviving structure from 17th century Salem. Oh, is that all? Uh-uh-uh, that was two questions. I said one. <laughs> but yes, he was also the big time judge that presided over the Salem witch trials. Is there some other fire I need to know about? No, May's accident was in a fire. I just don't want her getting upset with unnecessary questions about things long over. I understand. You can read all about Judge Hathorne when you come to the museum later. Gotta run. Whoa. Whoa. You jerk. 
Tegan said you've been in town for days, but you haven't come by. I know, I know, I know. I had to check in with your case at the, uh... Look, I didn't want to bother you. How are you holding up? Uh, I've been accused of worse. No, you haven't. Hey, at least I got you to get off your butt and finally visit me. Um... Oh, this is the girl I was telling you about. Nancy Drew. Nice to meet you. Uh, bye. <laughs> oh. She really doesn't want to talk. This could be difficult. Any advice? Hmm. Do better? I'll be in the kitchen. <laughs> the way she sat. Okay. Um. Well, I think I'm going to leave this first part right here. Um. That was basically the introduction of the mystery, it seems like, and now is the first break we have between dialogue and movie scenes, I suppose. So I'm going to leave this right part right here. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.